So when people ask us about the book, you know, how to teach thinking, thinking in the Common Core, you know, really, I like to tell them it's not about the Common Core so much. It's, it's about 21st century skills. It's about making the kids understand, making the, having the kids and the teachers understand that for the 21st century, we have to be rigorous and relevant information applied immediately. So really, you know, the common core is what's going on in America, but it's true of any standards-based curriculum that the thinking skills are embedded in it and the kids need to be taught those thinking skills explicitly. And that explicit teaching piece is really becoming uh, kind of in the forefront uh, all over the world, not just in the United States, that we understand that we have to teach thinking explicitly as well as skills in the content area, just as we teach the skills of language and the skills of mathematics. And the rigor and relevance, the rigor, it doesn't mean it necessarily is harder. It means it's, it's a deeper understanding and it's a more robust curriculum in terms of uh, how relevant is it, how can they use it, how can they apply it, more of the applied sciences and the applied math. And so, and we like to jokingly say, you know, people talk about rigor, it's not just hard. We like to say, you know, rigor doesn't mean just the, the answer in the back of the book. It doesn't mean just get the right answer. Rigor is much more, um, it's much more complex. It's much more over time. It's much more than just the right answer. Yeah, the rigor we're talking about in, in schools today is about uh, complexity. Where, where students are able to decipher complex text, where they're able to, um, you know, make sense of the research that the information is so available to them. Is it credible? Is it valid? Is it reliable? We can't believe everything we read on the internet. You know, those kinds of skills that um, many of the people in technology talk about. Our kids know the technology. They're doing all of those 21st century skills, but they're doing it from the cornerstone of entertainment. We want them to be doing it from the cornerstone of learning and using it with the content and the curriculum that we have. Yeah, and then what, we, what, I, what I find or we find when we're talking to teachers is that idea that the sea change for the teachers has, is that the kids are not coming to them for content. It used to be the teacher went to the, was the person that went to the big university that had all the books. Now I went to the university, had all the books, now I'm in the school, the fewer books, and I'm going to teach the kids because I've seen all the books. I know content. And then they're starting to understand that it's like every kid in the world has got a cell phone, and then on the cell phone they can Google the answer to any question. If it's just content driven, if it's just memorizing the five main rivers of the state of Mississippi. So, so we're not, it's not about they're coming to the schools for content, they're coming to schools to learn how to think and synthesize and generalize and apply the content mm -hmm. in a critical and rigorous way. So that kind of shift, it says, you know, teachers think, well, they already know all this stuff because they have, all have computers at home. It's, they have to understand, and um, what makes it exciting is their role is even more important than it's ever been before as they become guides on the side. Absolutely. And one of the things that we're noticing, too, in the work that we're doing, the, the one book, of course, is, is targeted to teachers, but we're now doing another book targeted to the leadership. And the principal as instructional leader is also the principal as coach. And they need to know a lot more about instruction than, you know, we have required in the past because it's all tied to teacher evaluation and, you know, all sorts of other things. But the instructional leader needs to know about explicit teaching. They need to know about project learning and problem-based learning and what does this look like in the classroom and are the kids really being prepared, as we're saying, college and career ready. So that by the time a student graduates from high school, they can go anywhere. They can go to a two-year tech school or they can go to a four-year university. That they have what they need to continue their education. So that's really, I think, a focus that's really taking a lot of, um, it, it's in the a spotlight right now. Yeah, and then the other part of it, too, when people talk about the 21st century skills and the teachers run into that situation where the kids know technology more than the teachers do. The kids are more versed in collaborating 
on, over the internet, in social media, um, they're more versed in it than the teacher, and the teacher can be intimidated or off-put by that and say, oh, well, they know more than I do. But in fact, they should be fearless with that idea that says, you know, the kids know how to use the internet, but they do they know how to think on the internet. And I'm mm -hmm. the one that's there to help them think on the internet. So so they have the social social skills and the collaboration skills and the communication skills we want for the 21st century, but can they do it critically? Can they apply it? And in the, a the focus way? on the 21st century, just like with the national curriculum in Australia, the common core standards that are being adopted across the United States, the focus is, is really on this application. It's like, how can I use it? The, the open-ended problem solving, the innovation, the, the idea that we can't just give them the three numbers that they need to solve the problem because that's not the real world. So the, what, what 21st century skills are requiring is the application of the learning rather than just inert knowledge or to pass the test or the examination. Um, those aren't even that, that great indicators of life success. You know, they can get into college and they can uh, pass the tests, but are they really going to be successful in an unknown future? We don't even know what the jobs are going to be. Well, and that, and that gets back to the, your work on transfer and transfer of knowledge and transfer of learning with adults and and children in that that idea that the, if the learner is metacognitively if they're aware of their of their levels of transfer, if they're aware of how well they are transferring things, and the teachers are aware of that, anybody you're teaching adults or teaching children, be able to say how well are they transferring these ideas? Because it's not just that they completed a a test in my work class or they completed a worksheet. Can they do it? Yes, they can. They can recognize adverbs, but can they write an adverbial phrase? Can they apply what I've taught them in a way? Can they transfer it to the next place? Mm -hmm. If I teach uh, computation skills in math, and then they cross the hallway to the next class in science, and the science teacher asks them to do science experiments where they have to use math, can they transfer that skill from my class to their class? Right. And they, do That's they exactly that? where I was headed with that 21st century. It's about the transfer of the learning into many different situations. So across content, we're seeing more curriculum integration because of project learning, problem-based learning. But we're also seeing more of the application and transfer um, where teachers are understanding that they have to pay attention to the transfer. They can't just teach them the knowledge or work with the information, but they have to do something with it. So if we take it to project learning or problem-based learning or performances, all of a sudden it, it change, it's a game changer. You know, so I had a we had a teacher um, told this story the other day about the active learning classroom, and they were talking about the kids are everywhere in the classroom, and talking about direct instruction versus the active learning. And she and she, we know that she was kind of joking, but she said, "I teach swimming." She goes, "I, must, I teach swimming, and um, it's cold." And this was in Minnesota. She says, "Cold Minnesota," and the kids come in and they're cold, and they don't want to get in the swimsuits and sw swimming and. And she said it would be so much easier to teach swimming. It would be so much easier to teach swimming. Just have the kids come in, leave their clothes on, put their winter coats on, put them in the grandstands next to the pool, and I go in the pool and I demonstrate everything they need to know to swim. They wouldn't splash. They wouldn't get water up their nose. They wouldn't have their head under the water while I'm giving instructions. There wouldn't be all that echoing noise in that pool. They'd sit there, and I would demonstrate everything they need to know how to swim. And then she laughs, and she goes, of course they wouldn't know how to swim, <laughs> but it'd be a well-managed class. It's a so great, she says the only way they're going to learn is to get them in the pool. And when they get them in the pool, it's noisy. So the only way we're going to get the kids to learn is they've got to get active. And um, and it gets a little noisy. And messy. And messy. <laughs> yeah, that, that active learning classroom. So the, we're, we're excited about what's happening, really, uh, as we look at the educational horizon we see it changing in a, probably as dramatically as it changed maybe 10 or 12 years ago when the standards came. So we have a standards-based curriculum across the world right now, and they're very similar kinds of standards, and, and it's about higher order thinking, it's about rigor, relevance, it's about a robust uh, 
projects that are authentic and real so that kids are excited. They said, when, you know, when learning isn't fun, the kids really aren't that interested. So we have to somehow get back to that you know, real learning, where the, that hands-on piece, and bringing in that technology in such a, a, a real way that, you know, at, at this point in time, we're advocating cell phones in the classroom, and, and we do a little poll, what do you think about that? And the, the teachers don't want it. They're just so afraid of it. And, and we, we say, remember when we were afraid of calculators in the classroom, that we thought, oh, the kids aren't going to learn their facts, and they're going to cheat, and they're going to do this, and none of that happened. So the same thing's going to happen with handheld computers. We have iPads now that are replacing smart boards because smart boards tend to lend themselves to the teacher standing in front of the classroom and doing the smart board where the kids are still sitting in the seats. With the iPad, they have their smart board right at their desk. So we're, we're excited about what's happening. We love the 21st century piece. We, we're excited in, you know, with the Common Core and just as you are with the national curriculum. Uh, we have a document from uh, South Australia that's talking about, you know, their new curriculum. So it's it's really a time when I think things are changing uh, with a student-centered focus, which is what we've been saying for a long time, but maybe we're doing more. And the part about the the part about the cell phone too is, and it's always controversial. I mean, every school's got to have their own policy about cell phones and. And technology and dress, and I mean, everybody's got a different, and they and they have to apply what makes sense for them. But the thing about the cell phone is that now, when I was a student growing up, you know, I could have a history book in front of me, and inside of the history book would be Sports Illustrated, and <laughs> I was reading Sports Illustrated. I was not reading the history book, and when I was in typing class, we had headphones on, and I was not listening to the the, the sound of the person dictating while I was taking time. I was listening to my own music. So being off task is not the cell phone's fault. Kids have been off task for time immemorial. Yeah, it's so not we something can, new. We can always get off task is off task. And so, yes, cell phones are convenient things, but it's still, it's still managing. It's managing the notes they used to pass around in classrooms. So, so off task is not and technology's what, fault. What's interesting about the technology piece, the kids are ready and going. The teachers many times are resistant to it. And, you know, that brings us back to that transfer piece. For teachers transferring into new technologies and for kids transferring the new knowledge that they have. And there's all these levels of transfer that happen and everybody kind of uh, takes it, you know, and takes the change on a little bit differently. Some are the, the early adopters and some are the uh, resistors. And we're never going to get them all on board, but gradually we start to see that transfer increasing. And the same thing happens with the kids. And I think we're just looking at our programs with response to intervention, the RTI programs, where we're saying, let's take the kids at their level, let's differentiate the instruction and get them where they are. Well, we have to do the same thing with our teachers. You know, we have to ease them into the, the technology integration. And we see that happening every day. You know, they said when um, technology, when they said when they invented the radio, they invented the radio. They said, oh my God, they've got the radio. It's unbelievable. Like, we can put a radio. And people made the point. They said, we can put a radio in every classroom in America. And all we have to do is have a Harvard professor give a lecture, and every kid in America would be listening to the radio, and then everybody would get a Harvard education. Well, then they understand that technology was not the answer. Technology was the tool they could mm -hmm. use, but they still had to have a teacher mediating, facilitating the learning. So even though there's cell phones, uh, uh, internet, computers, all that stuff, they still have to have someone that's guiding them to make sure that there's rigor, relevance, um, complex tasks, and the, they're helping them learn. That's the ultimate goal. So it's not so much we have to keep thinking about turning off technology, you have to help the teachers understand what it is, like you said, and then they can they can figure out how to design a lesson using that technology. So the challenges are still there, but they're they're different than they used to be. Exactly. So we're we're moving forward with technology, but we're also doing it in a way that curriculum is being looked at differently, and we're we're saying, you know, the curriculum is too uh, broad. We have to. We have to, if we're going to go deep, 
we can do the, the deep learning with fewer examples. We don't have to do the, the mile wide and an inch deep kind of curriculum that we've been so famous for. So. Interesting. 